and willful and persistent wanting to live without God. A deliberate pushing God away. Deliberately or willfully and persistently saying no to God. Turning your back on God. That is why he says in that verse, he says, who hold the truth in unrighteousness. So God hates this ungodliness, this pushing away God because that separates us from the source of life. If we live away from God, it is sudden death because God is the only source of life. Now, the principle of sin is pushing God away from us. When you push God away from you, that is called ungodliness or godlessness. If you read the book of John, I want us to read there very fast. Why God hates ungodliness. John 3 verse 36. I want you to run to verse 36. John 3 verse 36 says this. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. And he that believeth not, the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. So the wrath of God is against ungodliness. It is against ungodliness. And therefore we need to understand that. That that is the principle of the devil and it is the principle of sin that runs our hearts and that also runs the cities. When we want to transform cities, we must understand the depth of sin. Not that the problem of this world, please not, the problem of this world, the problem of the cities, the problem of the human heart is not the terrible things that humans do is not the evil actions that fill the earth and that is what we call unrighteousness actually unrighteousness is as a result of ungodliness when human beings push god away from themselves they inevitably become unrighteous all these evil acts will come because we have pushed god away from every activity and every activity of human life. So the problem is ungodliness. That is man turning his back against God, pushing him away. It is, it is, it is ungodliness that results in unrighteousness. When we see what is happening in the world, many times as human beings, we treat the symptoms. When you do not understand the depth of the sin problem, you will run to treat the symptoms. You will think that because of this evil, let's make some more laws. And the countries have made laws to deal with crime. But remember, we can even put other things. Education, for example. People can be well educated civilization can come progress but all these things have their proper place but they cannot change the heart they cannot change the heart the problem is not evil actions the problem is ungodliness all these things that we do in the world that we prescribe they are treating the symptoms I do not want us to make the same mistake of going into the cities and start treating the symptoms. We must understand the depth of the sin problem. All this that human beings can, can bring up, the problem of ungodliness cannot be treated by human interventions. The solution to the problem of sin, the solution to the problem of sin is man's relationship to God. 
The cities do not need more education. We have enough education in the cities. The cities do not need more laws against crime. There are many laws against crime in the cities. Enough laws. The cities do not need more progress and development in whatever manner. The cities need to be turned back to God. And this can only be done through the good news of the gospel. It can only be done through the good news of the gospel. I want to show you something. I want to show you something. Look at the consequences of turning our back from God. I want to run through them very fast. Go back to the book of Romans, chapter 1, from verse 21. Go back to the book of Romans, chapter 1, from verse 21. From verse 21, Paul now enumerates the problem, the consequence of ungodliness, the consequence of letting the principle of sin rule our hearts and rule the cities. He says, because that, because that, okay, let me read from the New American Standard Bible. For even though they knew God, he, he's talking about human beings. For even though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks, but they became futile in their speculations and their foolish hearts were darkened. The first consequence of pushing away God is that the human heart becomes foolish. The human heart becomes darkened. And as people, we are filled with futile speculations instead of truth. And that is the problem. When you read verse 24, verse 24 says, verse 24 says, wherefore, because of pushing away God, because of pushing away the presence of God in our lives, what happens? Therefore, God gave them over in the lust of their hearts to impurity so that their bodies would be dishonored among them. So what are we seeing here? When you push away God, the lusts and impurity of the flesh take over and people start dishonoring their own bodies. Verse, verse 26 says this, for this cause, because of pushing away God from the life of human beings. What happens? He says, for this God, for this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. The other version says, for this reason, God gave them over to degrading passions. The passions of the heart, the passions of the body can only be controlled under the reign of God. If God is enthroned in the heart, when God is pushed away from the heart, when God is pushed away from our lives, the inevitable consequence is that our passions and our flesh takes over and all kinds of evil become manifested. So we are filled with the degrading passions. Do you know what? It says there in verse 27, it says in verse 26, for this reason, God gave them over to degrading passions, for their women exchanged the natural function for that which is unnatural. What is, what is he talking about here? He's talking about lesbianism. It is something that comes because we have pushed away God. He also talks about homosexuality. He says, and likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the women Burned in their last one to, uh, toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error which was met. Homosexuality is not something that just comes. When you hear it in the world, all kinds of sexual impurity, they are as a result of pushing away God from the human life. And this is important. Then when you go to verse 20, 28, he, he enumerates many things. He says, 
And just as they did not see fit to acknowledge God any longer, when you do not see fit, every time a nation, a human being, does not see fit to acknowledge God in their lives, what happens? God gave them over to a depraved mind, a mind that cannot comprehend things, a mind that can can do anything and he says it here he says in verse 29 being filled with filled with all unrighteousness wickedness greed evil full of envy murder strife deceit malice they are gossips then he continues they they he says backbiters slanderers haters of god insolent arrogant boastful inventors of evil disobedient to parents then he says, without understanding, untrustworthy, unloving, unmerciful. All these are consequences of pushing God away from our lives. The problem is not evil. The problem is ungodliness. The cities need Christ. The cities need to be brought back to Christ. And when the cities the hearts of men need to be brought back to Christ. I want to end by reading the book of 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy, chapter 1, verse 15. Please remember, the sin problem, there is no human solution to the sin problem. Some, some people have even gone ahead and think that eating some type of food is a remedy to their sin problem. Food is important, but food will never change your heart. Some have thought that doing some kind of things, they have, they have actually turned the wonderful ordinances of Christianity into a means of salvation. Some people pay, give their tithes, and think that way they can be saved. Some people do many things. But remember, there is no human solution to the sin problem. God himself, through Christ, is the solution to the sin problem. Do you want to go to the cities? Remember, the cities, the problem of cities, the problem of your own heart is ungodliness pushing God away from our human life. Look, he says in verse 15, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15, he says this, verse 15 says, this is a faithful saying. Brothers and sisters, this is the only solution. God did not bring a solution. He became the solution. When you have Christ, you have the whole solution to the sin problem. Listen, he says, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. Another version says, it is a trustworthy statement deserving full acceptance. And what is that? That Christ Jesus came into this world to save sinners among whom I am foremost of all. He says, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Remember, the cities do not need more education. The cities do not need more infrastructure. The cities need Christ. As you join, as you go, as you store up in the cities, remember, Let's be careful not to treat the symptoms, but let's go to the root, the root of all unrighteousness. The root of all evil is nothing but ungodliness. And Christ and Christ alone, when Christ is lifted up, the cities will be turned to God. May the Lord bless us even as we think of showing up in the cities.
the problem of sin is a problem that only God deals with. When we put on Christ, the cities shall and will be transformed. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Our Father and our God in heaven, we thank you and bless your name because you have been so wonderful to us. The problem of ungodliness, we have pushed you away from our lives. We have wanted to live without your knowledge. And many times we prescribe human solutions to a problem that only you has solved in Christ. How we pray that, Lord, as young people, as we want to show up in the cities, let it not be us showing up, but let it be an uplifting of the righteousness of Christ that is the only remedy so that all men, so that the cities can be turned unto you. Now as we go to sleep, be with us, Lord, until we meet again. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Wow. Uh, thank you, brother, uh, for the wonderful message. The cities uh, do not need us to show up, but rather it should be Christ and Christ in us. So now I want to welcome uh, our pastor. I've seen him around, Pastor Pando Malika, who will uh, make uh, who will welcome the guests and also make the closing remarks and close the meeting. Pastor Karibu. Yeah, thank you so much, Elder Kazungu, for that wonderful presentation. If you are not a member of Harmony, but you joined us in listening to this presentation, please raise up your hand so that we may appreciate you. Yes, Joyce Irawa and Doreen Kerubo. Joyce Irawa, can you greet? Tell us where you are listening from. We wanted to hear your voice. <laughs> Hi, I'm listening from Kakamega. I'm just kidding, but I'm not there. Thank you so much. Doreen, unmute and greet. Hello, I'm listening from Busia. Oh, thank you so much, Doreen. God bless you. Do you have any other person? Okay, mine is just to encourage you to come back tomorrow and join and share the link to as many people as possible so that they may join in to enjoy the blessings of God. Otherwise, I just lead you into saying the words of grace. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen, amen, and good night. 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 Well, yeah. yeah.